After this evocation of Nilon in meditation, we have the privilege of hearing from Mitram. Friends, it is fitting that we gather here today to celebrate and reflect on the life of my father, Nilan through children. Growing up, my brother and I often heard of the happiness my parents shared at Harvard and in Cambridge. In our imagination, it was a place of intellectual wonder and excitement, a place marked by curious adventures in a foreign culture, a place of deep and enduring friendship. As a university, it is a place that enshrines the values of an open society the very values my father held dearest to his heart. At this dark moment, it is difficult to recapture that spirit of freedom and faith in the possible. Everywhere we seem consumed by the forces of bigotry and destruction. The feeble political resolve of the state and the hypocrisy of those that feign to represent the aspirations of the victim have compounded the pathology of violence that is Sri Lanka. In such a context, there are many that declaim the violence but reason that all hope is vain, that the decay of society is beyond redress. My father refused to surrender hope. It is the great quality that we so desperately miss. It is a hope that arises from the absolute moral conviction in the dignity and potential of human beings. But there will be others, some among us here today, who will be inspired by his example to carry on the struggle for peace, justice, and reconciliation. Some of us may feel that we have lost the staff on which we have leaned on, lost the promise and foundation that we needed for our development. But in truth, we have been enriched by a life of generous spirit and gentle courage. We have been gifted with a shining dream, and, is, and it is up to us to make of it as we may. On behalf of my family, I would like to thank Professor Steiner and the Human Rights Program for organizing this event. And thank you all for being here.
the floor is now open within the 15 minutes or so available to us for anyone to come forth and take the floor. I think it's best if you come up right in front here and speak from this podium. So whoever wishes to say some words should do so, may come forward now and do so. If you wish to speak from where you are, that is also agreeable. It's not essential to come forward. Dr. Pinchenko, Mr. Conscience of our nation, and his ideas will forever be the litmus test of our country's progress. I did not know uh, Milam until uh, Chalva very well. But uh, I made it a point of calling on him every time I came to Sri Lanka. Uh, primarily and ostensibly to get advice. Whatever it was I was working on, I wanted to get his perspective. Uh, the last time I saw him was well, three years ago. Uh, I was there for the Asian Development Bank. And without much hope of getting a response, I asked him what did he think that the Asian Development Bank could do to be of help uh, with the ethnic <coughs> conflict in Sri Lanka. He was a lawyer, as an economist. Uh, neither of us had training that fitted us particularly well to deal with that question. Uh, and he came up with, to me, an answer that, that um, bespoke his understanding of the problem. Um, it's a, it was an answer that was as imaginative as he always proved to be because uh, an international financial institution is really very poorly fitted to play a role in a conflict uh, that is like the one that has written Sri Lanka. Uh, he referred to the fact that uh, one of the assets that his generation had 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 been that they had been in school together. That they knew people on the other side or on the other sides, I should say because there's certainly more than two. They had personal connections. Uh, they had personal warmth that often had survived the conflict. And he suggested that one of the things that the ADB could do would be to help provide uh, scholarships and some financial support for trans-ethnic education. Because the new generation, he felt, was living up in separate schools, was growing up in separate schools, in separate communities, with no contact with each other. Uh, we discussed this for a while, and I did indeed put that into my report, uh, like so many things that consultants write, it probably never went anywhere. But I think it was an important and good idea the importance of establishing ties among communities uh, at an early stage. But I must confess, I also went to see him for a different reason. Uh, I had gone to Sri Lanka long ago, in 19, I think the first time in 1959, uh, before the conflict was active. And I'd been struck by the beauty of the country, the kindness and gentleness of people. And each time in coming back, I was disheartened by what had become of the country with tremendous potential, tremendous future. Uh, and each time, opportunities missed, uh, conflict worsened. And each time, 
finding friends on the Tamil side who had become embittered over time, angry, uh, felt it was hopeless, and friends on the Sinhalese side who had become in turn embittered by terrorism, by friends they had lost, and more important, by the general feeling of a country destroyed by a wanton few. I'm sorry, sir. I must ask you to be brief. We must make room for others. Yes. To also see him, in order to get an infusion of hope and courage, and each time he did not disappoint. Quite a few people have mentioned this time 29 years ago. It seemed to have been a pretty heady time for all of us. I'm trying to think of why it was so, because that's also when I met Beaver in Sydney. And I think what Cambridge means is what I remember of those times. And I know this place means so much to them and to all of us who met them then because of its carefreeness. And it's time to make friends. It's time to be together. Neelan did love Langdell Hall in the library. He also loved eating chocolate at Pamplona. And he loved watching TV. And he loved when everyone was gathered around him, all these friends in this place. I think one of the reasons we all feel so lost is that he was, for me, a, such a close friend and a good friend. And he was to everybody, all the young people who I saw in Colombo over the last couple of months, a mentor. And it wasn't just to these young people, but it was all along the way. I mean, in trying to find good schools for my children and encourage them. And also for me, every time I got a new job, he would call and say, that's great, Carol, or Caroline. He liked to call me that for some reason. But what are you going to do next? Let's see, next you should. And it was his care and this bringing people together. Sometimes Harvard gets it right bring such a person into our community to teach us so much, and I'm grateful for that. Our service is over. It has become a part of Neelan's memory. All of you here are cordially invited, I hope you will all come, after this commemoration to lunch in the John Chipman Gray Room, a room on the second floor of Pound Hall, very near here, and uh, perhaps some great parade can start outside that door and someone who knows exactly where the John Shipman Gray room is could, uh, could lead it. It's just literally a minute, minute and a half's walk. And uh, the lunch will continue to about 2.15 or 2.30, a buffet lunch, to, at which I very much hope to see you. Thank you all for coming.
que uno quería que lo notaran como quería hacer que estar